Hey, everybody, I'm John Granado. You can hear me mornings on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5, and that's Josh Jordan. You can hear him weekends on Moneyline right here on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Hit subscribe if you haven't yet so that you can get all of our content here at SportsMap HOU. This week, Josh says Rosenfels was on our show. He spoke about how quickly the team has fallen from grace, the Texans. He called it a bummer to watch, which he has to watch it. We pay him to watch the Texans. What a terrible, terrible job that man has. <laughs> it is tough for me because, you know, this Texans, you know, organization, uh, you know, is important to me. Uh, I spent three great years there and had great memories and, and great friends still living down in Houston. And to see how far they've fallen, fallen and sort of continue to fall and just bad football, just sort of one terribly time to play after another. And it, it, it's, it's, it's a bummer for me to watch. I'm sure, obviously, it's we talked about last week for, for Texans fans who I think are probably starting to not, not wanting to go to the games. Considering how bad everything has gone so far with everything, where's the trust level with uh, Casario being the guy to shepherd this thing, this team through the rebuild? It's definitely lowered for me now, John. Yeah, I wrote a piece for Sports Map Houston right when he was hired about seven things I know about Nick Casario. I don't know for a fact, but I just know they're true. One of the things on my list was he's not going to overpay for veteran players. That's not the Patriot way. And he's done a lot of that, bringing in veteran players and you know, even the Lawson signing. I mean, they ended up converting his salary into a bonus and then trading him to the Jets for a sixth round pick. So essentially you paid $8 million for a sixth round pick. I mean, there's some moves like that. The Cully hiring, the whole benefit of firing your coach first is that you have the most amount of choices when you hire your next coach. Well, the Texans fired O'Brien first, but they were the last team to hire a coach. That, that, that doesn't make sense to me. So and the, the Easterby stuff, man, you know, with the two reports about Jack Easterby and SI, and he still is visible and out there as he's ever been. You know, it, it, if it was me, if I was Kasseri, I'd be like, maybe take a step back. Maybe you don't need to be in front of the cameras, on the sidelines, in the draft room, on television. None of that's happened. So those are several things that really concern me. Yeah, you know, giving up a draft pick for Finley and he doesn't even make the team. And, you know, just to, and it's and that's not the only one, you know, trade. No, you get in draft pick, giving away draft picks, even though they're late draft picks, signing Royce Freeman for what? For who? Why? What is what is all of these guys that he signed that aren't going to be here? I realize you got to feel the team, but man, get some young guys. I would have loved to seen some some more Scotty Phillips before they put him on IR and he's done. Didn't even see what he can do. We saw him in the preseason. He looked decent. Give him a shot. Give some young guys a shot out there and see what they can do. You don't know when you're going to find some gold instead of these older veterans that are just mediocre and making this organization look worse and worse and worse. Now, one thing I do like is that he didn't flinch and he didn't trade Deshaun Watson for pennies on the dollar and even 50% of what he's worth. He's going to get a haul for Deshaun Watson. Now, whether or not he can turn that into good draft picks is another story. We shall see. That's the one thing that I like. Now, if he doesn't get the haul for Deshaun, you know, Cal allegedly wanted Deshaun gone before the trade deadline. And, and Casario said, no, we are going to wait. I like it. But if he doesn't get a haul and if he doesn't pay of these picks that he gets, don't pay off. I could certainly see Cal starting to wane in his loyalty to Casario. Me too. I mean, think if you're Cal and you're like, hey, I think you should trade him now. You'll get a better deal. And then Cal's right and Nick's wrong. And Cal's like, I made the better decision than Nick Casario. Like, he's going to remember that. And he's going to keep that in the front of his mind. Like, wow, I, I saw this situation better than Nick did. And because we don't know, more stuff could come down with Deshaun. It's not out of the question that his value could actually go down between now and March. I mean, we don't know what could come out. Bite so they tongue. are rolling the dice on that. Bite your tongue, okay? Deshaun <laughs> has been a good boy. Nothing is coming, okay? He understands, and now he's a class first-class first, first class citizen, and anybody would be happy, and he'd be wonderful to have Deshaun on their football team. So bite your tongue with that kind of crap, talking about more stuff coming out on Deshaun. And listen, 
I don't think I don't think Cal turns on him. He's given him uh, what he Casario's got like a twenty year deal, doesn't he? And you know, and Jack Easterby loves him, so it, Cal has to love him. And it doesn't matter what it, Cal said. Okay, to all of the things that Bill O'Brien did. I, he certainly isn't going to tell Nick Casario that he's bad and you're going to have to fire him. There's no no chance that that possibly happens. But if he does, which side does Jack Easterby take? This is a tough one. Is he going to stand behind his man, like, or is he going to pull uh, a Bill O'Brien on him? Is he going to is he going to go and stand little finger him like he did with Bill O'Brien? What, that, to your point, you say that Cal's not going to do anything against Casario and go against him. What if Jack's whispering in his, in his ear to do exactly that? That's not that crazy. And I think Jack's the one that just keeps moving on here. I mean, I, for some reason, they, they think everything he says is gold, John. So I think they might side with Jack. I wonder, though, they can't n- not hear what's going on. I know that they're in this giant castle uh, on Kirby, and they can't hear, and they're isolated from everything. It's impossible that they don't hear all the rumblings about Easterby and how nobody trusts this organization anymore, how few people are showing up now, and they just can't take you know the, the organization – that, that hired Jack Easterby. Jack Easterby was a major part of the collapse of this organization, and yet he's still there. People don't trust this organization, and in large part, it's because of Jack Easterby, and yet they don't hear it. I can't believe that. I, I think they're starting to hear it. I mean, when we heard rumors about Jeff Bezos looking to buy an NFL team like Texas please. Twitter just went crazy, like, please buy the team. Please buy the team, Jeff. I've got a great team for you. Yes. I've got a great team. It's the best you team can, ever. Yes. And you could get Jack Easterby with it. Yeah. It's awesome. Okay. you got a built-in prayer for everybody. Like, come on, Jeff Bezos. You need Jack Easterby in your life. You seem like the devil to us. Please <laughs> buy the Texans and you can get yourself a free Jack Easterby. <laughs> 